You can choose again. Choose how you want to feel. Yeah, I was just um, reflecting back on the Huckabee's movie last night that we watched. And um, one of the I guess, more powerful um, parts of that movie for me last night, watching it maybe the third time, was the scene where um, Brad puked on the table, you know, after he was asked to tell this story again and about Shania and the mayonnaise. And, and I think in that, just the thought about that was that, you know, with some of these deeper seated beliefs that seem to come up over and over again, like over and over, and it just seems like they're just, they keep coming up, keep coming up, is it that they are getting healed each time and there will come a point where you're just sick of the belief and it will go? Yeah, that's it. I mean, that's it's a it seems to be a gradual process because it would be too threatening to the mind to to occur faster. So it, it's occurring, we might say, as fast as it can. You know, it, and there does seem to be this allowance for for getting more in touch and more in touch. And I think most everyone has that experience where we've had certain major patterns and issues that you know. Like the Carly Simon song, if you're willing to play the game, it will be coming around again. And it's like, oh, and here it comes, and we can almost feel like, oh, here we go. <laughs> with another partner, with another situation, with another job. The repetition is like, oh, I've seen this one, oh, look at this one, coming back again, you know. But again, coming up for healing. You know, when we have trials, when we have tribulations, when we have temptations, it always is this gentle voice of the Spirit within us saying, you know, choose again, choose again. You know, it's like, or my friend Dorothy used to say that that was her experience of the Course was, did you get it yet? Did you get it? Did you get it? Did you get it? That she said, that's what Jesus is doing with me. Did you get it? <laughs> you know, it was very light. You know, it was like presented once again where you seem to make a faulty choice or you took it personal, you are given another opportunity to see it, to see the world anew, to see the, with new eyes, to realize the truth, to see the true perception of it. And it just seems to come, and every little time is a golden opportunity for that. And yet the ego will try to, you know, perceive it as, aha, uh -huh, look at you, you're, see, you're never going to get it. It's the same issue. You know, almost like you're a broken record that's just stuck and it just keeps going around and repeating and looping. It just tries to make it into a very negative thing, but but really it's, it, it, we do have that opportunity. And, and in one sense, for Brad, you know, he told the Shania story so many times, but it was told in arrogance and the existential detectives, they zoomed right in on He was telling it for attention. Uh, you know, to to look like he's he's kind of in control. He's one up to her, and she's she's famous. So look what he did with this famous person. It was all puffing up this false sense of identity, and and the ex existential detectives were calmly just saying, just look at this. You know, this doesn't really serve you. It's not who you really are. It's just propping up this false sense of identity. Much the same as he was doing with his brother, you know, sending him all these gifts, material gifts, and wouldn't even spend the time of day to, to sit with him or be with him. And, and they said, you know, your brother says you're not sympathetic to him, you know, there was no connection there. And he was, you know, kind of telling himself he was a great brother by sending him all these gifts, you know, again, just a false identity uh, that, that had to get popped. So. When he was sitting at the table, after he had just, you know, how am I not myself? How am I not myself? How am I not myself? They had planted the seed. Then when he, he had that in full awareness, that telling this story is how am I not myself? Then he, he barfed. <laughs> because it was more of a symbol of, I can't do this anymore. And, and hallelujah for that. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. You know, it was a pop, it was a breakthrough. And it's good, you can see that in the movie, that to be as gentle with yourself when you go through something, 
and you seem to be having some symptoms or something, think, wow, I'm giving myself permission to really have a major breakthrough here. I've really <laughs> generated some symptoms here. <laughs> Instead of like, you are making yourself sick. You are choosing this. It is proving once again that you are guilty. You know, the ego will turn it just as hard the other way and say, aha, uh -huh, more evidence how you're not getting it. And so you can see it's all based on which perspective you're in. It determines, you know, how you see it. It's really quite amazing. We're used to looking at form and diagnosing and, and, and trying to conclude something from the form. And the Course of Miracles is just saying, no, try to suspend all your judgments and conclusions and just keep opening, opening your heart up, opening your mind up, and just stay with me. It's like Jesus is saying, I got gotcha. you. Got you right in the tractor beam, just stay with me, oh good, good. Always rejoicing with us, cheering us on, giving us pep talks, giving us great reminders. Never once critical, never once demanding, never once commanding us, you know, you must do this or this or this, just so gentle, gentle. Thank you, thank you, thank you, you know, that's, that's the Holy Spirit, that's Jesus, that's that presence in our mind. And we can offer that gift too to all our brothers and sisters as we start to experience it more in our heart. We feel the graciousness of that, the grace of that, where, where it starts to get softer and softer and softer. I know we were traveling one time and um, I, th I think you had a, a, a rough day there at Camus that one day when I think the office was being rearranged and you really enjoyed a desk that you could look out the window and suddenly it was all rearranged so it wasn't like a corner, a corner desk. You went from a window to a wall. <laughs> and, you just, and then the symptoms came, you went through, it was like a dark day, you know. Because the ego was in there going, see, you're not loved. <laughs> it was like really running the number there. But, but you know, ultimately we do grow. We, the, the lessons do keep coming around in, in various different forms to just accept our worthiness, that we are so worthy of love and we are so loved. And it's great that it just keeps coming around and whatever it takes for the Spirit to really teach us that, you know, it will... It will succeed because it is inevitable. It's God's will. You can choose again. Choose how you want to feel.